ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to be here. Uh, these are very difficult times. So I would uh, like to start with a joke. Albert Einstein met three scientists in the heaven, and he asked the first one, what is your IQ? 190. Great, then we can discuss my theory about uh, the general relativity. The second one, what's your IQ? 130. Great, we can discuss the latest advances in mathematics and physics. And the third one, what is your IQ? 80. And what is your inflation forecast for the next year? <laughs> so, I don't like, I don't like, as a, as a central banker, I don't like this joke. But, but it clearly illustrates that forecasting is a very tough business. And, and we knew that. Uh, even, uh, I can say that uh, forecasting this one in, a, in the Slovak Republic would be somewhat easier because I will be very good at forecasting the Slovak Euro exchange rate. So my presentation is uh, precisely about uh, uh, the Euro, whether the Euro is an asset or a burden in times of crisis. So as I said, it is very tough to forecast, especially if it refers to uh, the future. But maybe we are somewhat better at uh, explaining the current economic situation. We are not good at forecasting, but maybe we understand what is going on now. So let's ask uh, one of the uh, oldest and uh, very important economists, Paul, Paul uh, Samuelson. And he said that what we know about the global financial crisis is that we don't know very much. So we are not good at uh, understanding the current events either. So then there is something wrong with, uh, maybe something wrong with uh, economics or economists, but uh, let's be uh, a little bit more optimistic and uh, I will try to be more optimistic uh, mainly because uh, we in uh, Slovakia uh, just joined the, the Eurozone. So today I will talk about uh, four broad issues the first one is a kind of uh, a wish list of financial economists. Um, later on, uh, something about exchange rate uh, development, uh, the Visegrad for countries, and maybe some, some uh, limited forecast what to expect uh, uh, in the current future. So maybe, maybe you heard about uh, the old Russian fairy tale about the golden fish and the three wishes of uh, the fisherman and his wife. So let's look at, at uh, uh, the main wishes of uh, financial economists. And we can see that the first one is we would like to have independent monetary policy. We would like to fight against uh, recession. We would like uh, to have our own policies. The second wish is, uh, is coming mainly from the business sector. The business sector says that uh, I don't like this volatility of exchange rate. I would uh, uh, like to have uh, a predictable business environment and mainly stability. So let's have a fixed exchange rate. Let's create a, a good business environment. And the third issue is in small and open economies is uh, a free flow of capital. Of course, if we have restriction on capital, uh, we uh, limit not only the portfolio investments, but also direct investments, and direct investments are very essential for our economies. The problem is that, uh, the problem with economics is that there is no golden fish. We cannot have all these three things. We have to choose. We can have at most two of them. So basically this presentation will be uh, about these choices and uh, uh, about uh, the uh, choices of uh, Slovakia, uh, Hungary, Poland, and, and the Czech Republic. Okay, so we cannot guarantee all these three things. What to give up? Slovakia 
has uh, chosen the first one, independent monetary policy. What are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, this approach? Basically, the advantage is that we are expected to do that. When we joined the European Union, we uh, basically uh, signed uh, also an agreement to join the Eurozone at later point in time. Uh, the second uh, issue is that in small and open economies, monetary policy is, is not really independent. If there's a lot of foreign ownership in our country, we can do whatever we want with our interest rates. Uh, the mother companies can borrow at uh, ECB rates, so uh, uh, the independence of monetary policy is somewhat limited in small open economies. And of course, we can see in current situation, uh, the independent monetary policy and fixing the exchange rate is a very good short-term shield against the market turbulences. But of course, there are also disadvantages, mainly that uh, we lose some tools to find against the recession. The second approach, what to give up, a fixed exchange rate, uh, is an approach uh, mainly at other uh, Visegrad for countries. In that case, there are more risks for the business sector. There are possible contagion effects from other emerging markets in global turbulences, like uh, in this case, we can see clearly mainly in Poland and Hungary, and of course, a better cycle management. And uh, theoretically, we can uh, give up also free capital flows, but uh, in practice, uh, uh, usually, uh, we do, do not try this because uh, this will limit our productive potential, but of course, uh, it uh, would uh, uh, end up with higher stability. We have a lot of experience with high stability during the previous regime, but there was no growth, so sometimes it is better uh, to uh, be in favor of uh, the productive potential and not, the not just stability. Okay, basically now the arguments are that uh, we are in the Eurozone. It is very good for uh, the short-term stability, it is very good for other companies trying to find investments in, in the region. But it is not so good because all the other currencies are depreciating in the region. So we are losing some of our uh, competitiveness. Yes, that, that is definitely true, but uh, some of you maybe remember uh, the times when there were, there were good times here in Czech Republic also, and there were complaints about the very strong exchange rate. So we cannot see this advantage as a, a very long-term advantage for this country. Uh, for short-term business cycle uh, movements, it is definitely an asset, but uh, it is only a temporary factor. There are, of course, redistributive effects because depreciated, depreciated currency means not just uh, uh, more competitiveness, but also higher inflation. Uh, we central bankers know something about the inflation, so it is not very good for households, but it could, uh, um, it is helping the business sector. And not in all sectors the exchange rate is very relevant. We've appreciated 20% in, in the last uh, two, three years, and our uh, business sector uh, was not ruined by the very appreciated exchange rate. In some of the big companies, the exchange rate plays uh, not a very important role. Um, the foreign demand is much more important in, in their situation. And sometimes, of course, uh, depreciation could create some further depreciation uh, expectations. So, while clearly depreciation could help in the short run, from a longer term perspective, we think that um, this is not a, a best uh, structural policy to cure the economy. So let's look at a little bit the Visegrad 4 